Hi folks, this is Ron with Ideal. In this video, I'm going to step you through every feature and function of the Ideal 61-327 manual ranging digital multimeter here from Ideal. Now folks, when you purchase this tester, you're going to get the tester itself. You're going to also get three uh, AAA batteries that will power it. You'll get a set of test leads to make measurements with. You also will receive a certificate of compliance, and the certificate of compliance basically states that the tester was tested during its manufacturing that it meets or exceeds our published specifications. Now you'll also see a serial number on that as well as a serial number on the back of the tester. Now folks, the testers carry a two-year warranty from date of purchase. So hang on to your receipts because you'll need that in order uh, to work with any warranty issues. So again, two years from date of purchase. So hang on to those receipts. You also get a manual, and please read and fully understand the manual for actually using the testers. Now, I should point out to you a couple of basic things here. One is, this is a CAT3 rated tester, meaning you can be used safely in CAT3 testing environments, up to 600 volts DC or 600 volts AC. Now, I should point out that the test leads that come with the testers have removable caps, and if I am using the tester in a CAT2 testing environment, say at an outlet in a room, and I need to insert the leads into the slots at the outlet in the room, that's okay to do. That's a CAT2 testing environment. But always made, uh, hang on to these caps and make sure you replace them, because if you do use the tester in a CAT3 testing environment, say at a panel, electrical panel, uh, you would uh, need those protective caps. So hang on to those. Now, I will also point out on the back of the tester, there are three different uh, third-party testing laboratories have certified these testers. So there's UL for both Canada and the United States, CE, uh, which is European, and the little triangle is for Australia. And uh, these are, we've submitted these testers to UL, and they again meet or exceed all the parameters or testing requirements that they lay out for these electrical testers. Now, the uh, back of the tester also has uh, probe holders that we can uh, store our probes in if we're not using them. You can actually store them in the higher position as well if you wanted to do, say, some two-handed testing. You also note in the top of the tester in the middle here is a mount for a hanging strap, which is sold separately, that you can hang it, the uh, tester from a nail, screw, or magnetic surface, and again, that is sold separately. Tester also has a kickstand on the back of it that you can use it to stand the tester up during your testing if you'd like to. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, remove this battery cover. And when we do that, uh, folks, anytime you remove the battery cover, uh, do not actually try to use the tester to make any measurements. Always make sure the battery cover is on it if you're going to use it. And uh, right here is a battery compartment, and there's a little legend here that tells you how to orient your batteries in there properly. And right here on the tester, uh, you normally see things like fuses. This particular tester does not measure amperage or current, so there are no fuses to be replaced inside the tester. Let me go ahead and put the battery cover back on it. There we go. All right. Now, I'll point out to you the different functions of the tester. Over here is volts DC, and we have 4,000 millivolts, 40 volts, 400 and 600 volts DC. That is the DC voltage ranges. For AC, we see 40 volts, 400 and 600 volt as ranges for AC voltage. Tester does have some non-contact voltage sensing capabilities, which we'll point out to you in a little bit. There's also some settings for some small one and a half or nine volt batteries. The little audible symbol is for continuity when we're measuring con uh, uh, for continuity in like motor windings or switches or something like that. That little symbol is for a diode and we'll show how to use that. And all of these are for measuring ohms or resistance. So there's 400 ohms, 4,000, 40,000, 400, and 4 million ohms. All right. Now, I should point out to you, too, that this is a manual ranging uh, tester, so you have to know how to set the range on the tester. A step up from that would be an auto ranging tester. And you might notice on this auto ranging tester, there's only one setting for volts, either AC or DC. 
and auto ranging testers will automatically set the range to get a more accurate reading. Now there's no, nothing wrong with manual ranging testers, you just know how to, have to know how to set the range on the tester to get an accurate reading, which we'll show you how to do. All right. Folks, I assume you know that the black lead goes into the black common port and the red lead will go into the red port. All right. Now, when you first turn the tester on, there's a little button right here, which is a backlight. If you press the backlight, you get a little bit brighter display. If you're in a dim or dark area when you're using a tester, the backlight's nice to have. It lasts for five minutes and automatically turns itself off. You just have to hit the backlight again to turn it back on. You might also notice in the very top of the display, it says APO. Uh, that stands for auto power off. The testers automatically power themselves off after 30 minutes of not being used. And if you'd like to, you can disable that by pressing and holding the hold button down, turning the tester back on, and you'll notice that APO is no longer in the display. And we can re-enable it just by simply turning it off and then turning it back on. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and measure some DC voltage. I'm going to set it to its lowest setting over here which is um, uh, 4,000 uh, millivolts. And if you'll notice, if I incorrectly put the test leads on the tester, oops, I'm going to crank my power supply down here. There we come. It's dropping down. I had my power supply turned up. It's dropping it down 600, 500. And it's measuring millivolts here, and you notice it's giving me a negative sign. That means that I have my test leads on the wrong, of oh, polarity incorrect on my test leads. So I'm going to do that correct. Okay, there we go. That's right. And we're reading around 50 uh, millivolts here is what we're reading. Now, the resolution here is at 4,000 millivolts. So as we crank up the power supply, and whoops, we get just past 4,000 millivolts, we get the OL or over limit in the display. That just means that we need to turn the, uh, uh, the uh, range up on the tester to 40 volts. And you notice we're reading about 6.6, well, 6.7 volts, and we're reading into hundredths of a volt in resolution. Now, the resolution will change again as we get above 40, but before that happens, we get above 30. Anytime you get above 30 volts, the tester is going to beep at you like that. You're going to get a red light to light up, and you get the little lightning bolt in the display. That indicates to you that you're above 30 volts, and that'll happen for either AC or DC, and that you're uh, above 30 volts in, in the, depending on the environment you're doing your testing in, whether it's a CAT2 or CAT3 testing environment, uh, personal protective equipment may be required, and if that is, you should be wearing it. And folks, anytime you're working with electrical circuits, obviously following good NDC industry safety guidelines is always a good idea. And again, we're still reading into hundredths of a volt in resolution, but that'll change as I get above 40, which it did. And since we're above 40 volts, we get the OL in the display. We go up on the range and we're reading about 44.2 volts. And we're reading into now just down to a tenth of a volt in resolution. Now my little power supply, does not go up to 400 volts, so I can't show you the next range change. Just by simply mo moving the tester to the next highest range, which is 600 volts, you notice we lose that tenth of a volt in resolution. So again, folks, if you're not quite sure which range to put it in, start at the highest range, work your way down to until you get the most accurate reading you can, can on your tester. And again, if you get too low in range, the tester will just simply say OL on you, or over limit. Now, I can also demonstrate that with AC voltage. And I have an AC power supply over here. And it is putting out, again, about 59 millivolts, or 0.5 volts, I should say. Um, and it's reading into hundredths of a volt. But as I, again, crank up that power supply and get above 30, we will again get that high voltage warning. We'll let us know that personal protective equipment may be required. And then above 40 is when this resolution is going to change on us. And instead of reading into hundreds of volts, we will be down to just a tenth of a volt. And since I'm over 40 volts, I just got to set the range one setting higher. And we're reading into a tenth of a volt there in resolution. 
And once again, power supply won't go above 400 volts. So uh, just by simply turning the tester to the next highest range, you'll notice that we lose that tenth of a volt in resolution. So again, start at your highest settings, work your way down until you get the most accurate reading. And again, if you get too low on your ranges, you will get OL in your display. All right, I'm going to disconnect that. And let's talk about continuity here for a minute. The tester, if I put it in continuity, you get the little audible symbol in the display. And right now it says OL or again, over limit. Uh, it's measuring resistance or ohms in continuity. So continuity is basically measuring ohms. And these particular testers, anything under 10 ohms or less, they will give you an audible tone. Metered pretty much zeroed out on us there, which it should, okay? Gives you audi audible tone. And um, um, a lot of folks would tell you anytime before you start using a, 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 mo a meter, you might check its continuity. That tells you the tester's good, the leads are good, the batteries are working, and you can go make some other measurements. And we can measure continuity in like fuses and switches and, you know, motor windings. Um, so, uh, again, you get the audible tone. Now, I happen to have a little testing board over here that has four resistors wired in parallel, which actually show the tester a little under 6 ohms. And since it's under 10, we also get the audible tone since we're still in the continuity setting. But if I move it over to resistance, this is 400 ohms, do that same test, and we're still getting the same reading, but we no longer get the audible tone. Now here is a single resistor. That's about 370 four or five ohms or 33 ohms, okay? And you'll notice we're reading down to a tenth of an ohm in resolution. I should point out too, the tester have a hold, has a hold button on it. If you just simply press the hold button the, and remove the leads from the circuit, the tester will retain the last thing it saw. And to disable that, you just have to hit the hold button again and it goes away. Now here are four resistors wired in series which actually show the tester about 700 ohms. So, but we're, so that's above 400, we're getting the OL in the display. I've got to turn the tester to the next highest setting. And again, getting about 700 ohms. And again, if I've gone too high, my accuracy is not near as good as if I, so again, start with the highest, move down the scale until you get the most accurate reading you can with your tester. Now the tester also has, a, or a little board on, has a diode, and if I go to the diode setting, a diode is a pretty simple uh, semiconductor that only lets current flow through it really only in one direction only. So if I go across the diode, we're reading about a half a volt there, but you'll notice if I reverse my polarities on my test leads, I get no reading at all. So again, a diode is good if you get reading in one direction only. Okay. Tester also has the ability to test small batteries. Now, the difference between measuring DC voltage here versus measuring DC voltage over here is over here the tester will apply a, a pretty high impedance to the tester or to the circuit being uh, tested for safety applications. But down here with these small batteries, the tester is actually going to apply a little load on the batteries when we measure it. So again, measuring about 9.1 volt there. And you'll notice if I go to this side and measure at 40 volts, I get about 9.3 or almost 9.4. So again, we get a little bit better accuracy on the actual volt or charge in the battery by applying a slight load to it. And anything that uh, gets, you know, around eight, we're dropping around seven, you're doing a battery that's no longer actually usable. Okay. Now, the tester also last I'll show you is, is the non-contact uh, non-contact voltage sensing capabilities of the tester. And I'm going to take the black lead out of the tester. You notice the tester says EF on it. And I should point out that if I run a, a test cord across the back of this tester, it is indicating there is voltage in the cord, but I'm going to tell you that these, the non-contact voltage sensing capabilities of this, these kinds of testers versus 
one of these little voltage sticks is uh, uh, quite a bit different. The little voltage sticks have the sensor in the very tip of the tester, and you can get it very close to whatever you're, you're measuring. But you'll notice if I uh, put this cord across the top of the tester, uh, I can't sense anything because of the insulation around this, the cord and the insulation around the top of the tester, where again, these voltage sticks, I can stick them right into the cord. Now, you can, if you need to, use the red lead and stick it in the cord as well in order to measure uh, and sense voltage that way as well, okay? So again, not quite as good as one of these little voltage sticks are. And I should point out to you too, non-contact voltage sensing capability is always nice, but it's always important to make sure you verify the circuit is de-energized by actually using your tester to test for voltage using the leads. So there you go, folks. That's the Ideal 61-327 Manual Ranging Digital Multimeter from Ideal. And as always, please read and fully understand the manuals for actually using the testers. Hey, I'm Ron with Ideal. I'll see you on the next one.